So far, we've let users browse the menu, add items to an order, and then see their total order. What we haven't done yet is make a mechanism that can actually confirm their order somehow. So that's our next job. Now, we're not going to send anything off to a real server here, but I do at least want to use this opportunity to show you one of SwiftUI's most impressive power features called Forms. Forms are containers like stacks, but they're specifically designed for things where the user has to input some data, like a setting screen, for example, anywhere where they want to make several choices in one place. Forms do a few interesting things for us automatically, and I'll show you them in use. Along the way, you'll also see some common UI components like pickers, text fields, segmented controls, and more. Now, I know what you're thinking. Surely, text fields are easy. Well, they're not hard in SwiftUI, but they also don't work like you might expect them to do if you've come from a UI kit. To get things up and running, I'll make a new SwiftUI view called Checkout View. So press Command N now, choose SwiftUI View, and name this thing Checkout View. We're going to sing the same order environment object our other views had too. So it shares that same pool of information. So I'll say there is an at environment object, var order is an order. Make sure and provide that for the preview as well. Down here, environment object is an empty order like that. That's the easy stuff out of the way. So let's try something new. Let's show a picker inside here with various payment options. We can choose cash, they could use credit card, or they could use iDyne points. Our app is called iDyne. This requires two new properties to work with. First, we need a property to store all possible values we want to show inside the picker. So we'll make that here. We'll say, let payment types be an array of cash, credit card, or iDyne, oops, iDyne points, like that. Second, we need a property where SwiftUI can store the value that's currently selected in the picker. You see, when we change the UI to be credit card or iDyne points or cash or whatever, SwiftUI wants to know about that so we can update our view. Maybe some views were hidden that are now being shown, for example. And rather than asking our thing to watch all changes by hand, we instead bind our picker to a property on our struct. When the picker changes, SwiftUI automatically changes the property as well for us. It keeps the two in sync. And just like the at environment object property wrapper, this will also cause SwiftUI to re-invoke the body property so any changes become visible straight away. Now we already used at environment object to store data that came externally in the SwiftUI environment. Here though, this data is just for our view. It's local value. It's a simple value as well, rather than a whole class like order was. SwiftUI gives us a different property wrapper for this simple local value called at state. It works similarly to environment object in that if it changes, it will re-invoke re the UI code, but it's designed for simple local values like integers and strings, not classes like order. Remember, if you want to use simple values that are only for the current view or its immediate descendants, you want to use at state for your property wrapper. Apple also recommends you mark these properties as being private to reiterate they're not designed to be read externally. So add this to the checkout view. At state private var payment type is cash by default. I actually put that next to the array down here so you can see they're attached. And now let's fill in this body property with a picker. This is all news. I'll give you the code first and go over what it does in detail. We'll say in here is a VStack with a section, then a picker saying, how do you want to pay? With selection having dollar payment type. Inside there we'll do for each payment types ID of self, text, dollar zero. Then I'll add a navigation title here of payment and a navbar title display mode of dot in line like that. Okay. So uh, it is 
I've got the wrong code here. Sorry, I'm the type, not paying the type. It is hopefully going to compile. There we go. Correctly, hooray. Um, let's break it down. There's quite a bit of code there. First, we have a vertical stack of content with just one thing inside it, a section. Inside there is a picker asking it to saying, how, how do you want to pay with payment type being the uh, currently selected thing of cash. Then leap over the payment types array using its ID of self identifier and use its text for the item in the picker. And this whole thing has a title of payment in small text rather than a large title. And the result is this kind of thing here, cash. So you tap on that and it goes a credit card or the iDime points is working very nicely with that small amount of code. The real question here is why is it dollar payment type and not just payment type? Why does it have to be a dollar sign there?